Pacta sunt servanda. Contracts are to be kept. That is the maxim. But two modern doctrines have evolved to excuse non-performance when it would otherwise be due. The two modern doctrines of impracticability and frustration of purpose have very similar elements. The key difference is that impracticability generally refers to great difficulty in producing a good or providing a service, whereas frustration of purpose is generally employed by a buyer whose need for the good or service has gone to nearly zero. Both of these excuse doctrines require a supervening event after contract formation and before the time performance is due, the non-occurrence of which was a basic assumption on which the contract was formed. And this contingency rendered the contract impractical to perform or frustrated its purpose through no fault of the party seeking the excuse. Transatlantic Financing Corporation versus United States illustrates the meaning of impracticability. It's not something small. A mere change in a shipping route or an increased expense of 15 to 20 percent, percent does not constitute impracticability. Rather, the cost increase must be great, something like 10 or 12 or 20 times what was expected in order for impracticability to come into play in excusing performance of a contract. There are some circumstances where impracticability is relatively easy, where there is the death or incapacity of the person necessary for performance, where there is destruction or failure to come into existence of the thing necessary for performance, or regulation or government order that prevents performance. And we saw this government order in NIPSCO. In NIPSCO versus Carbon County Coal, we saw a government order only makes performance impracticable where it actually prevents performance. It has to do more than just make performance more expensive. The government order in NIPSCO made their uh, continued purchase and use of coal more expensive, but it did not make it impossible. And therefore, the excuse doctrine was not granted in NIPSCO either. Parties can also agree among themselves to have a type of excuse doctrine built into the contract. Parties can agree among themselves how to allocate the risk of supervening contingencies. <clears throat> Contractual provisions accounting for what happens upon so-called acts of God are called force majeure clauses. The restatement specifically talks about frustration of purpose in section 265. Frustration is very similar to impracticability, but it does not require the elimination of the actual thing necessary for performance. Rather, it focuses on the value of that thing, the value of that performance becoming virtually worthless. So while it might be possible to perform, the performance has no further value. The historic case of Krell versus Henry illustrates how contractual purpose can be frustrated by a supervening event. In this case, there was to be a coronation, and an individual paid a substantial amount of money for a room that could view the coronation. The room was not worth so much money but for the coronation. So when the coronation was canceled, the purpose of renting the room, well, it had been frustrated because it was now worthless to spend such an exorbitant sum on a room which had a view of a coronation that was not transpiring. A more modern case was Viking Supply versus National Cart. In this more recent case, the purpose of a distributorship agreement was frustrated by a third party's refusal to deal with a middleman. And so this distributor agreement had no value, in fact had negative value because it precluded direct sales to the buyer. We can thus simplify the excuse doctrine into three general elements. First, that there is impracticability, which generally means far greater expense to perform or danger to health and human safety, or in the case of frustration, total diminution of value of the performance. 
the occurrence of this supervening event, uh, uh, the occurrence of the event uh, was not foreseen. And its non-occurrence was a basic assumption of the contract. And the non-occurrence of this event was not a risk allocated to either party. Applying these factors to our last case, ADBAR v. New Beginnings, we see that the purpose of a lease is not frustrated where the leasee is having trouble securing financing. Market shifts and financial ability of parties are generally not basic assumptions on which a contract is made, at least not for the purpose of the excuse defenses. Pacta sunt servanda. Contracts are meant to be kept, but courts do grant excuse in limited cases, especially where performance would create health and safety concerns, where an unexpected event caused an exceptionally huge increase in cost, or where the subject matter or purpose of the contract ceases to exist, although through no fault of either party. 